enemy, uh, the enemy, uh, the Bible says in 1 Peter uh, 5 and 8, the, the enemy, uh, he said, be sober and vigilant. Yes, sir. That's the word. That's the word. Be self-controlled. Uh -huh. Be watchful. Yeah. yeah. Be alert. Uh -huh. Because your adversary, your opponent, the enemy, the devil, is as a roaring lion. He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You're talking good, I know. Uh, uh, so he is looking, uh, Vince, for someone to destroy. But what baffles me, uh, what baffles me is that the enemy doesn't stop at attempting to destroy you. Okay, yeah, work with me, here we go. The enemy doesn't stop uh, at attempting to destroy you. His attacks are directed towards you, but he has a greater purpose. Yeah, see, see, Shawnee, uh, the enemy, uh, and this is right up your alley, the enemy is afraid of addition and multiplication. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to take you somewhere, Minister V. Just work with me. The enemy is afraid of addition and multiplication. What he does enjoy, Leslie, is division and subtraction. But anything, nausea that adds to your life, he is afraid of. Right, let, me, let me prove my point, Aaron. The Bible says in Matthew uh, chapter 18, verse two, 20, uh, the Bible says this. Uh, For where two or three are gathered in my name, here goes the addition, there am I in the midst. Okay, all right, so right, that went right over your head. One plus one is two, two plus one is three, uh, three plus one is four, where two or three are gathered in my name. Here we go, here goes another addition. Uh, there am I in the midst. Okay, all right, you don't like that one. Let me see if I can give you this one. Uh, one can chase a thousand. Yeah, okay. See, I'm trying to work with you. Two can put 10,000 to flight. Okay, all right. You don't like that one? Let me see if I can give you Leviticus 26 and 8. It says five of you will chase 100, and 100 of you will chase 10,000, and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. Okay, all right, you don't like that one. Okay, let me see if I can give you another one. Uh, the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before your face. They shall come against thee one way, but they shall flee seven ways. Okay, all right, all right. I I'm trying to work this, Vince. I'm trying to work this. Uh, let let's go to Psalms 91. Maybe you can get with this one. A thousand shall fall at thy side. But 10,000 shall fall at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. The enemy shall, uh, is afraid of addition and multiplication, but he enjoys and sit down when he sees division. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to work it. See, the enemy, uh, this is the thing, uh, Sister, uh, Sister Edith, the enemy uh, uh, can't stand uh, when something is added to your life, when his purpose is to subtract everything out of your life. Okay. Yeah. That's why I can't sit around and dwell on what I lost. That's the thing. That's the thing. See, see, this is the thing. This is where we mess up. You can't sit around and dwell on what you lost because if you concentrate on what you lost, you'll never look ahead to what can be added in your life. Okay. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to work this thing. Let me, let me work this. Here we go. Uh, uh. When God takes something out of your life, when God takes things away, he always have a plan of adding or giving you more than what you lost. Let me, let me say it again uh, so you can understand. When God takes something out of your life, 
He always have a plan of adding something, multiplying something, to give you something better than what you lost. Let me work it. Uh, but the enemy, the enemy subtracts, and he never seeks to add, but he continually decreases you until you have nothing left. Jesus said, uh, see, because the enemy... Uh, subtracts, right? The enemy divides, right? Okay. Uh, Jesus, he adds, right? Okay. He said, John 10 and 10, uh, uh, the, uh, the thief cometh not but what? To steal, kill, and to destroy. And then what Jesus say? I come that you might have life and have it what? More. Oh, you're not working with me. I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So he's saying you're going to have life, but there's going to be something added to your life. You're going to have peace of mind. You're going to have love. You're going to have richness of heart. You're going to have stamina to endure your trials and your hardship. You're going to have faith. You're going to have success. You're going to have direction. Yeah, this, this, is what you, this is what the Bible says. He said, oh, this is a good one. Here we go. Beloved, uh -huh. <laughs> I wish above all things that you would prosper. You're not working with me, McNeil. And be in good health. Even as your This is another one, Dad. I, I, I got to give it to him. Here we go. If you're faithful over a few things. This, see, this, this is what the Bible says in Matthew. God will make you ruler if you can take care of the little things. God will make you ruler. Let me, let me give you one more uh, because I'm getting excited. Uh, uh, this is something that we quote all the time, but we don't take heed of, of the depth of what the profoundness uh, of what uh, the scripture is saying. Uh, uh, well, it says this, now unto him who is able okay, uh, okay, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or thing is the, the God is saying that if you do what I ask you to do I'm going to add something to your life now unto him now you're not giving glory to your brother or your sister or your husband or your wife or your relative or, or your boo or whoever you're creeping with you're not giving glory to them what you're giving glory to is now unto him who is able? Look at somebody and say, my God is able. No, you ain't working with me. Look at somebody and say, my God is able. He's able to do exceedingly. Not the mediocre, not the average. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Let me, let me, let me, let me work this. Here we go. Let me work this. Let me get two more minutes. And I'm getting out of here. Uh, God doesn't take away without adding. But the enemy takes to destroy. Let me work it. I know I'm going slow today. Hold on. God doesn't take without adding. But the enemy takes to destroy. And some of y'all have been upset because God has allowed things to be taken from your life without your permission. Okay. But you got to understand, you got to understand that the thing that you were reduced to will never result in your demise when you walk with God. Okay. All right, let me let me see if I can let me see if I can break this down. 
The thing that you lowered yourself to, the thing that was taken out of your life that may have lowered you or reduced you or decreased you, God will never give you something. He will never give you something without adding something to your life. And when he takes away that thing that don't belong in your life, it never results in your demise when you walk with God. God is telling you this. He's telling you this. Uh, that the thing that I took out of your life, I hope you can't handle this. The thing that I took out of your life was past its expiration date. The thing that I hmm, took out of your life, it, it, it was past its expiration date. And I'm trying to give you something new and fresh, but you're trying to hold on to what's past this due date. The thing is, the thing is, some things you got to let go, you got to let go of before God can add the things into your life. Amen. Because if, if he gives it to you prematurely without taking the necessary waste out, without taking that garbage out, if he gives it to you prematurely, you'll corrupt the whole purpose of having something new and fresh. Now you're the head. Now you're, you're stronger. Even if you have to be by yourself, you're happier now. You're friendlier. You're a sociable person. You're personable. That's because God added to your life. And God told me to tell some of y'all, God told me to tell some of y'all what the enemy took out of your life. God is going to restore the years and the months and the days. I'm trying to tell you that the enemy has taken some things from your life, but God is going to restore the years and the days let me say it again what the enemy all your haters have taken from your life God is going to restore the years the months and the days and guess what y'all in 2012 is a leap year what is a leap year a leap year is that uh, is that year that contains one additional day in the calendar year in other words instead of having a uh, 28 days in February now you got 29 days what am I trying to tell you I'm trying to tell you that God is going to add some days for every day that you lost something look at your neighbor and say neighbor uh, you got to work with me look at your neighbor and say neighbor God is going to add something in my life do I have anybody in here that lost some things and you're glad that God is going to add to your life matter of fact God is going to restore those days and those years and those months that the enemy has taken away and now you're going to be renewed Mood in your life. You're going to be fresh in your life. You're going to advance in your life. God is going to give you an increase. God is going to put your swag back. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm about to get my swag back. Now look at somebody else and say, I'm about to get something added to my life. What are you talking about, RD? I'm talking about Give me my blessings, God. I've been waiting long enough, and the enemy has been trying to destroy me. But now I'm asking you, God, to add something to my life. Do I got anybody in here that knows that you want God to add something to your life? Give me my house. Give me my health. Give me my wealth. Give me my my family give me my children give me my job give me my marriage give me my integrity give me the favor God cuz if I got favor favor is more precious than money favor is more valuable than gold favor is more precious than silver and I declare that God is gonna add something to my life that can't no devil in hell take away from me.